Hello, I'm Russell Sturgis, the founder and principal of the Centre for Western Mindfulness. Welcome to a mini blog series that I'm doing based on one of the mindfulness tools that we use at the Centre for Western Mindfulness. In fact, it's probably uh, one of the um, really popular ones that, that, that we get to share with people. This particular mindfulness tool is called HAIL, and it's an acronym, which I'll tell you a little bit about what it stands for in a minute. I just want to first talk a moment about the word mindfulness. Mindfulness is a relatively new word uh, in the English language. It emerged during the uh, late 18th century, early 19th century, coming out of some later Buddhist texts. And um, we obviously had mindful somewhere around about the 14th century or thereabouts, but mindfulness as such is, is quite new in terms of the English language. Etymologically, mindfulness mean, means bringing one's attention to experiences in the present moment. So I'm going to just say that again. So mindfulness is bringing one's attention to experiences in the present moment. So think about this as being, um, um, being conscious of the, the current events as opposed to being on autopilot, unaware and functioning from your subconscious place, which is where we tend to function from uh, fairly habitually. So, so in terms of consciousness, consciousness is that we're really present, conscious to what's going on. Subconscious is we're here, but we function on this autopilot, as I suggested. So let's talk about HAIL. As an acronym, HAIL stands for H is to halt. To If you're in a, in, in a situation where um, you've been taken out of your stillness, out of your peace, if you're feeling discombobulated, um, if you're aware that you're not feeling good, then you're going to use HAIL. And H is HALT. It's stop. Now, today, that's what I'm going to be talking about is that. So we'll, we'll go into that in more detail. A is consider the after effect. In other words, chances are you've been down this path before, and so you know what the impact, the after effect's going to be. So this is about stopping and considering the after effect. L is entertaining the idea of what a loving alternative could be to what it is that, that is happening in this moment. And then E is what's the easy option. And by that, what we're saying is, What's the option that um, doesn't require discipline in order for you to move forward, that doesn't require effort, um, something that just comes easy for you, which includes doing what you've always done. But we'll talk more about that when we get to E in the fourth in this series of, of blogs. So HALT literally means in the context of this, um, to stop being on autopilot. This is the only way that you're going to be able to engage your capacity to pay true attention to the experiences that are happening in the current moment. You've got to be able to stop subconscious function and, and become totally present, which is conscious to what's happening in this moment. Now, how you become conscious and, and, um, and pay attention is to become the observer. In being the observer, you look more closely at um, the facts of what's going on on two levels. Now, on the first level, it's what's going on externally. It's what's happening um, in the environment around me. It's what's happening um, with the person or people that I'm with and, and what it is that, that is happening in terms of the way in which we're engaging. Um, 
Then you've got the second part of this, which is the internal, which is about uh, looking at what's going on inside of you. So in other words, what's happening to you mentally, what's happening to you physically, emotionally, and, and spiritually. Now in the context of spiritual, we talk about what it is that you desire, what it is that you value, and, and what's going on in that, that context. So in terms of our external way of observing, we use our senses to do that. So, you know, if you think of the five senses, sight, so we're seeing what's going on, we use our vision to absorb what's going on, hearing, we, we're listening to what's going on, um, it, touch, there might be physical sensation that we're experiencing, um, smell, it could be a smell thing that, that, that you're engaging in in that moment. It could be um, taste. So they, these are the five core senses that we use in which to um, observe what's going on around us. Now, I like to add in um, intuition, that sort of gut feel, that sense that we have that we pick up on as it relates to what's going on. And, and I think that that's a valid experience that that sort of fits within that that package of the senses now these are probably the best way to describe them uh, as the tools of observation and of course what we're doing is using these senses to observe the experience these are our tools for paying attention and of course like anything that's exercised the more they're used the more they build certainly within the capacity of the limitations of, um, of health and well-being. So being aware of these tools and developing these tools, you're able to develop a greater sense of what's going on in the external world. You're able to be more of the observer and such, and that being the case, you're able to take on more facts or have more clarity around the facts. And remember, all you're doing here is collecting facts. That's the, that's the whole objective of the observer is to identify the facts. If you remember, I talked about that in, um, in the written blog about the facts that were taking place between that, the husband and wife. Unfortunately, what happens is when facts pop into our head, our mind takes over and it wants to give context to the facts, and so it tries to give it a meaning. Um, invariably, of course, all it can do is resort to the pool of knowledge that it has that has to do with the past. And so it, it then begins to determine whether this is a good, bad, right, wrong, um, serving, not serving. It goes into a whole lot of different um, sort of scenarios. Now, the interesting thing is, is the minute that the mind kicks in, the observer stops functioning. You can only do one or the other. You can either be the observer and have the mind not involved or you engage the mind and you stop being the observer. And so in the early stages of learning to become the observer, it's not uncommon to use HALT many times. So, you know, you, you, you're really keen to want to live a more mindful life and you're committed to practicing HALT. So you discombobulate and you go HALT and you go through the process of being the observer of the facts. Fact number one pops in and off the mind goes. And next thing you find yourself not being the observer, so you have to go halt again and you come back to being the observer again. And this can play on and off many times in the early stages where you can find yourself um, consistently having to remind yourself to halt because you're so used to being on automatic pilot in terms of allowing the mind to take over and to go down the rabbit hole that it does as it's, as it's exploring or entertaining the, the context of the facts that you've just observed. You know, 
Um, my way of developing my ability to be the observer is that I spend time each day practicing that. And uh, one of the ways that, that I do that is to go and sit on my veranda. I now live in a rainforest and, and I'm, I'm literally right in the middle of a rainforest. And I sit out on my balcony and, um, and I can be there for a good 45 minutes to an hour. And I just sit and I observe. I observe the trees. I observe um, the way in which the wind and the clouds are moving through the trees, not that I can see much cloud because of the density of the rainforest. The birds um, are amazing and I'm getting to watch what they do and how they interact and the sounds that I can hear the sounds, I can smell the forest and if there's been a bit of rain, there's that, that, that sort of smell of the damp forest, which is, is unique. Um, and, uh, um, and maybe, you know, I'm experiencing the taste of having brushed my teeth and, and, and there's a sensation of toothpaste, um, at that particular time in the morning. But what happens is I don't entertain a mental engagement as I'm being the observer. If the temptation is to go down that mental route, I feel it straight away and I'm able to go, no, let's come back to just being the observer. That's my gentle way of saying halt. Halt's a little bit more abrupt, but sometimes we need abrupt in the early stages in order for us to, to come to that place. Now that's the first part of halt. The second part of observing the facts is observing the internal facts. What's going on inside of us in terms of our thinking, what's going on in terms of our um, emotions and, and what we're feeling and, and, and what's happening in terms of our sensations. In other words, aches and pains and um, tightness or um, looseness or whatever it is that we're feeling in sensations in the body. And then of course, um, um, the, the, the sense of motive, um, which is, is part of the mind, but that desire, um, that, that sense of, of wanting to um, um, turn up with intention um, also is, is worthwhile observing. So um, in this part, ultimately you're, you're, you're halting and you're observing the facts around your thoughts, the facts around your feelings, and the facts around your sensations and your, your intention. So, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing to become the observer of the mind, the thinking, and not engage the mind. You're stepping back. It's like you step back from yourself. So there's you with your mind, your body, and your feelings, and the observer steps back and is able to watch those things. Of course, it's even more harder to observe the mind and then not entertain what the thoughts of the mind are. But the real art in this is to be able to step back and observe the thoughts without engaging the thoughts. I have thoughts, but I'm not my thoughts. I have feelings, but I'm not my feelings. I'm more than that. I'm that which can observe it. Um, um, I have sensations in my body, but I'm not my body. I'm more than that because... I can step back and observe it. You see, there's the observer part of us and there's the part of us in, in the body, in our um, experience of the body that's able to use um, the senses to engage our experience. So, um, and, and, and able to use, um, um, in, in addition to senses, thoughts and feelings, um, sensations and, and desires. So what we're doing is, is being able to um, um, gain an appreciation of where we're at in terms of the facts internally. Okay, um, in order to develop a greater capacity to do this, one of the ways that, that I did in the early stages and I would suggest to you is, is have a journal. And a couple of times a day, just take um, a moment to stop. And um, in the early stages, I wouldn't do them all. I'd break them down into just take a moment to stop and have a look at your feelings that you've been experiencing over, say, the last three hours. What feelings came up for me? Um, and then narrow it down to the last 10 minutes. 
What have I been feeling in the last 10 minutes? And then narrow it down to this moment. What am I feeling right now? Just being the observer of it. And then do the same with your thoughts and do the same with the sensations and with your intentions. And then what I suggest is as you become more skilled at doing that, you've practiced it, then you can start to mix them up. But use a journal, and as I said, do it a couple of times a day where you're practicing observing these things. Yes, it takes a few minutes. And of course, this is the interesting thing about becoming the observer is that it takes time. And the reason that we have autopilot and the reason that we have this subconscious function is that it actually helps to speed things up a bit. So going on autopilot, I don't have to think about anything and it just happens. I've done all of this before. But we have a saying is if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And so what happens is when you go down this um, 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 process of, of relying on um, subconscious programs or habitual behavior or autopilot, you end up doing what you've always done. And of course, the impact of that is you always get what you've always got. And so the same sort of issues, which keep on taking you out of your stillness, keep on arising. I want you to just for a moment now, while we're together in this video, take a moment to reflect on the state of your thoughts, feelings and sensations that you've had today. And I'm just going to give you 15 seconds just to take a moment to think about um, and to observe if your mind got caught up and was heavily engaged in thinking or um, or if it's um, maybe you're meditating, um, what are the feelings you've been experiencing, the emotions that, have, that you've experienced today and what are the sensations that you've had today? Just take a moment to, to think about those, to observe them. Okay, so um, whenever you take time to do this, you become the observer. But to do it, you've got to go off autopilot to be the observer. And, and, and remember that when you go into the place of observation, all you're doing is basically taking down facts or identifying facts. You're not putting, and, and I talk about um, using full stops and commas. Um, I think of myself as a punctuation expert, but, but not in a grammatical way. In, in, this is a metaphorical way. So full stops is when we get to the end of um, a, a fact and we put a full stop in and that's it. It's just a, it's, it's just a statement of fact. If we use a comma, what happens is we then go on to give it a meaning. And generally, as I said earlier on, the reference point for meaning is our past. And so we're just recreating a whole set of information that we've dealt with the past, which has resulted in our discombobulation in most cases. So when you become the observer and you're observing the facts, remember to use full stops after the facts. Don't go anywhere else with them, just state what the facts are. So observing your external and internal is what the H inhale is all about. Now in the next um, blog in this series, I'll be exploring the A inhale, which is about observing. And in this case, it's about recalling the after effect. So this is, if I go down this path of behavior, what's going to be the after effect? Now, we don't have to sort of um, play with the, the possibility of this because we've been there before. These sort of situations, and I talk about form and content in, in um, um, 
the blogs. Um, we've been down these situations before and we know where they're going to take us. And so what we're going to be doing is exploring what the, the after effect is and, and once again, identifying the facts. Um, we're not going to extrapolate good, bad, right or wrong. We're just going to be stating how this turns out if I do what I've always done. So to find out more about the Center for Western Mindfulness and the, these sorts of things that, that I'm sharing with you now, please go to our website. It's a really lovely and easy website to, to get around, www.westernmindfulness.com.au. Thank you for hanging around and, and watching the video today. And um, I look forward to catching up with you in the next blog, which is the A in Hale.